story I'm sure our viewers have been waiting patiently all weekend for us to cover. A staffer for Democratic Senator Ben Cardin was fired over the weekend after it came to light that he had allegedly filmed himself having sex in a Senate committee room. Now, we will not show the video for obvious reasons. Sorry to even put this graphic up there, but the footage of the former Cardin legislative aide was widely distributed online. The staffer had reportedly come under fire less than a week earlier for apparently yelling free Palestine at Republican Jewish Congressman Max Miller, though he has denied the suspect and has denied that aspect of it. Cardin's office was cagey with a response following the revelation, simply stating that the staffer had been fired and that it was a personal matter that they would not be expanding upon. The staffer in question appeared to deny being in the video at all in a LinkedIn post, and The Hill has not confirmed anything about his identity. In worse news for Senator Cardin, a group chat for gay men in politics anonymously told me that the committee room where the porn video was filmed was reserved using Senator Ben Cardin's name. Some online pointed out the seeming hypocrisy on Senator Cardin not condemning his staffer's behavior more forcefully, given statements he had made referring to the Capitol as a sacred space. Take a listen. January the 6th, like December the 7th and September the 11th, is a date which will live in infamy. I refer to U.S. Capitol as sacred space because it's so much more than a building where the Senate and the House of Representatives meet and conduct business. It is the embodiment of our ideals, our aspirations, and hope, not just to Americans, but also to all of humanity. Yeah, look, I think this, it, it's fair to um, call out Democrats like Senator Cardin for some hypocrisy here, for treating the Capitol building like some kind of sacred space, some kind of church in terms of January 6th, and then to have it be you know, treated this obviously inappropriate way by an individual. Um, you know, what was wrong with the January 6th riots is that it's not appropriate for people to smash windows and uh, mess up people's desks and fight with cops. That's not acceptable behavior, regardless of who's doing it. Similarly, this is obviously not, ex ex I mean, it's a workplace. It's not, it's not that the, the sanctity of the, of the building was violated, that it's like some holy, like they, <laughs> this is where they come and, you know, take and, and confiscate all our money and, right. and spy on us and make war. Like it's, it's not a building where good things happen. So I don't, I don't care about like, again, the, it's not a, it's not a church. It's not, that doesn't matter, but it's obviously inappropriate for someone in any workplace. If this was our workplace, if this was, if this was a, if this was a McDonald's, it would be inappropriate. It doesn't matter. It's just like, you can't do this, and obviously this person needs to be fired. Yeah, I agree that it doesn't have so much to do with the government building. I think what troubles me about his particular position, though, is the fact that his salary is taxpayer-funded. Yeah. He has access to these faces because of his taxpayer-funded job, and he is abusing them, of course, and apparently abusing the reservation system as well. Apparently there are two ways that you can reserve these hearing rooms. One is via an online system that the rules committee that— um, uh, every Senate act office has access to. And then you can also directly book with whatever committee has jurisdiction over that room. So he probably did it during this online system. I'm trying to confirm that he did book it <laughs> under Senator Cardin's name, but um, obviously um, a, an abuse of this access that he had to the space where uh, former FBI Director James Comey testified at one point. They sure. confirmed multiple Supreme Court justices there. And you have this young man, unfortunately, defiling poor Amy Klobuchar's desk um, in this video. I mean, his LinkedIn statement was so bizarre, by the way. He goes on and I, he sort of tacitly admits that it's him, but not outright. But then he goes on to say that he's being attacked for who he loves, implying that this is a homophobic thing, and then saying that um, he would never disrespect his workplace, which fundamentally yeah. that is what he did with his behavior. Yeah. Um it's the evidence compiled by other news outlets that it is, in fact, this person seems pretty overwhelming to me. I'm not going to specifically say his name for um, legal reasons, but it, it, it seems like they've identified the correct person to me. Um, yeah, further, you know, so regardless of the circumstances of the video being obtained or, or leaked, the underlying, like you can't, again, you can't have sex in someone's, in, in the workplace. Like that's just, that's prohibited very directly by like sexual harassment policies. That would not be acceptable in the pri in the private sector. It's actually, it's like it's forbidden. Correct. So it, it, it should be the same standard here. So that's neither here nor there. That's not even up for debate. I do like, you know, I don't, um, I don't take any, I, I think it's, 
you know, it, it can be very cruel and to, to you know leak people's the revenge porn kind of stuff, um, nude images and videos of people. Uh, you know, against their, without their permission and all that, I think it is very bad and even in some cases should be criminalized or there should be harsher penalties about it on social media. It seems to be the case here, what, you know, what has been reported is that uh, this was posted in some kind, maybe uh, you, you've Yeah, let's dig into that a little in bit more. Here, okay, so this specific video was shared in a group chat for gay men in politics. So my understanding is that there are dozens of people in it by all intents and purposes, this was basically public. Um, yeah. And it was shared consensually? Yes. It was, so he we, shared with his it. Not, he shared, he shared it. it. Yeah. Now, in addition to that, though, he also had a burner Twitter account using a fake name that was similar to his real name in which he routinely posted pornographic material with his face in it. So, like, daily right. tweets of nude selfies, nude videos, um, videos of him having sex with his boyfriend, who was a, supposedly the other person in this video taken in the Hart Senate building. And there were actual photos and videos on that account as well that were also allegedly taken in a government building. So, for example, there's one nude selfie that he took, and the caption on it was, snuck this in the work bathroom. Mm -hmm. And then people also were able to dig up some prior material that he actually took before he started working for Senator Cardin. So it's pretty astounding that they didn't find this during a basic background check before they hired this young man, where he asked Lindsey Graham to meet him in the showers while nude and also asked Joe Biden to spit in his mouth in one of the captions. Yeah, uh, seems, so uh... maybe there are some questions to be asked about the screening process for Senate staffers as well. I mean, I'm a libertarian, so I, you know, people go out, live your best life, doesn't matter to me. I don't care what you do consensually with other people. I don't care what videos you take of yourself and other people. You can't do it in a public place, in a public workspace. That's just like obviously not um, acceptable. Also, the, those comments you just mentioned mm -hmm. seem not also professional. Yeah, if you're trying to work in of, politics, know, like seems... maybe you don't post those on your public Twitter account. Yeah, maybe keep that, you keep that thought to yourself. But I, I don't care, like I wouldn't, I'm not for like shaming people at all, but you can't, you just can't do this in a public workplace. <laughs> It'd be insane to, th and, and you know, I don't see anyone saying the otherwise, frankly. Have you encountered there any were a defensive? Couple, there were a couple of people, there was one sort of left-wing reporter who mm -hmm. was complaining that Allegedly, the only reason this video got out was because he was the same fellow who was accused of shouting Free Palestine at Max Miller. So they're claiming it's like an op from Max Miller's office. But apparently, this has been brewing in like. Yeah, but the I mean, even if that was the while. case, they didn't make up. I mean, he did it, something. Right. It doesn't make up for the fact that he did something obviously reprehensible. Right. I said and the then, same thing about like the Claudine, the very different issue, the Claudine Gay, Harvard president, right. the plagiarism thing. Uh, it, it, when Brianna and I have argued about this, she'll say, well, it's only getting brought up because conservatives are mad at her for the things she said. I'm like, well, that may be true, but. Like the, if the underlying is accusation is accurate, then like what are you supposed to do with that? You yeah. can't ignore it just because the person has some agenda you don't like. Yeah, I think that's right. And then there was another article by NBC News that snuck in the fact that conservative outlets were reporting it as if to like signal to their readers that you shouldn't pay attention to this yeah. or you should be opposed to it because it was first reported by conservative media, which is a common tactic. If a Republican staffer was having... <laughs> sex in Congress, that would be It would be a bigger scandal, page. I mean, I think. It, honestly, if anyone, <laughs> honestly. anyone, it doesn't have to be just like sex in the public space in the building is going to be reported on and should and, and needs to be dealt with because that's not acceptable. Well, yeah, I mean, there's enough speculation that like half of Republican senators are gay from the left anyway, so I'm sure that mm. it, they wouldn't even need to be doing it in government buildings for that to be some huge scandal. Well, I will uh, just share my thought. Before I had one statement that I made on this issue on Twitter. Right, let's Can we put it up on the screen, please? Um, I am outraged by this vile, disgusting act committed in the U.S. Senate last week, a moral transgression, a shock to all decent Americans. I'm speaking, of course, about the extension of warrantless FISA surveillance. Good for you, Robbie. That's what out truly I like me. that. So, uh, okay, thank you for <laughs> covering that with me. Thank you for doing so much reporting, really getting to You're the welcome. bottom of this. More rising right after this.